Samsung have done it, Google have done it, Motorola, Oppos and others have done it. They have all created foldable phones, but Apple haven't. Some say they shouldn't, while others say they should, and there are some out there who say the foldable market won't arrive to the masses until Apple enters the market. But should they? Let's have a look. Foldable devices like these are one of the hottest talking points right now in the smartphone industry. Some people like them, others don't. But whichever side you're on, there's no denying that they offer three new ways of interacting with your phone. Portability, by being compact and easy to carry around when folded, but still offering that large screen size when unfolded, which can be useful for watching videos, reading books, browsing the web, or multitasking on different apps. Versatility, by being more adaptable to different use cases and user preferences, and in a innovation by showcasing a company's creativity and technological prowess in the market, leading to potentially attracting new customers who are looking for something different and exciting from their mobile phones. Samsung is arguably the leader in the foldable market at the moment and have been making phones like this ever since 2019 with their Z series in the Fold and this one the Flip. You would think that in a market such as the US market, Samsung would face tough competition from Apple if they were to enter, as Apple have that loyal customer base there and that strong brand image. Image. Google released their Pixel Fold earlier this year, designed to showcase the best of Android on one of Google's own phones. But Google are still a long way behind Samsung. Huawei with the Mate X3, Oppo with the Find N2 Flip, Vivo with the X Fold 2, which is only available in China, and Motorola with their Razer series of phones are amongst the best of the rest with other phone makers recently announcing plans to make and release foldable devices soon. These competitors will try to differentiate themselves from the dominant smartphone makers by offering different form factors, designs, materials, and operating system variants for their foldable devices. They may also target specific regions where they have a strong presence or niche appeal. We all know that Apple are notoriously silent on plans for future devices, and whether they are to enter the world of foldables, that's gonna be no different. But that doesn't mean they aren't working on them behind the scenes. In fact, there be, could be some clues that suggest that Apple is at least thinking about its own foldable device in the form of patents. While the patents that Apple have filed relate to foldable devices, patents aren't a guarantee that a product will ever be released, but they do show a direction that the company is exploring. But what these patents and many more that get filed indicate is that Apple is trying to solve some of those challenges that developers and manufacturers of foldable devices face, such as durability, usability, and the aesthetics. So what would happen if Apple actually entered the foldable device market and put something that they would sell alongside their standard Standard iPhones. Imagine the scenario. Apple, the maker of the iPhone, creates a premium foldable device that appeals to its law fan base and tries to attract new customers who value design and functionality. That sounds like something Apple would do, doesn't it? They would leverage brand reputation, software ecosystem, and hardware quality to create a unique and compelling foldable device that would set a new standard for the industry. If it was a success, it would boost Apple's sales and market share, and it would challenge its competitors to have to catch up. Another scenario is that Apple would create a niche foldable device that would cater to a specific segment of customers who value novelty and innovation, probably similar to what they're doing with the Vision Pro. Apple could experiment with different form factors and features, possibly similar to Samsung with their Fold and Flip phones, or an iPad-like device that would offer a different user experience than its existing products. This would allow Apple Apple to test the waters and learn from customer feedback without risking its core business. A third scenario, which is always the risk for anyone wanting to bring a new product to market, is that Apple could create a foldable device that essentially flops and is a market disaster, where it fails to meet customer expectations and market demand. Could you imagine? Then there could be a point where they could face technical difficulties, production delays, quality issues, things that would compromise its new foldable device. Alternatively, Apple could just misjudge the customer preferences, pricing strategy, or market approach for its foldable device. As a worst case scenario, this outcome could damage Apple's reputation and profitability and give its competitors that edge. I'm sure that we all know, or at least can imagine, that bringing any device to market isn't an easy task. It involves assessing those technical and design challenges and deciding how those challenges are to be overcome. Companies like Apple know how to make that standard brick-shaped phone because they've been doing it for ages, just simply refining their process every year to get to that current iterations of their designs. But foldables come with a whole different set of challenges. Imagine executives sitting around a table in the workshops, in the labs, deciding how to facilitate that repeating folding and unfolding without damaging the screen or the hinge while at the same time making the bendable screen resistant to scratches and cracks and at the same time as reducing that crease to a minimum. 
and Apple Foldable needs to provide a seamless and intuitive user experience across different modes and orientations. The screen has to adapt to the changes in size, shape and aspect ratio and the software has to support existing apps and accessories that are designed for the standard screen sizes and shapes, multitasking, continuity and compatibility. Samsung Foldables have features that like immersive display, app continuity and flex mode that allows users to switch seamlessly between the cover and main displays use multiple apps simultaneously and adjust the screen size for that optimal viewing. These features make users more productive, creative and entertained with their foldable devices. But for Apple to do this, it requires working with developers to ensure a smooth user experience by developing new user interfaces, gestures and applications that can optimize the foldable display. But we all know how good Apple can be at that software and hardware integration, along with making sure its products work well within the ecosystem. Foldable devices have to to appeal to the customer's preferences and expectations in terms of design and functionality. The device has to be compact, lightweight and ergonomic while also offering a large and immersive screen. The device has to look attractive and stylish while also being practical and durable. In a fine balance of form and function as well as that innovation and familiarity. Well, so far we've only talked about the development of a potential foldable device from Apple. We've not discussed the impacts it will have for the potential consumers like yourself who will probably buy this foldable iPhone or iPad. If we look at foldables on the market now, you can see the trend. They aren't cheap and an Apple foldable will be no different. They are more expensive than the conventional smartphones due to that complex design, the engineer involved, and of course the profit that the company wants to make. For many people, the price of foldables will deter some potential buyers who are not willing to pay that premium price and the benefits that come from devices with this form factor. I think there's a novelty and convenience about foldable devices like these, as well as that nostalgia factor of flip phones from that original Motorola Razr. We all have different expectations for the durability, performance, features and battery life of our phones. And we've seen that with some foldable devices, the sacrifices that were made, which are quite clear to see. Foldable devices have the potential to influence our behavior while we use them, like content consumption. If we see a notification on the closed screen of the phone, it may mean less time than getting distracted by hours of doom scrolling. That could be the normal occurrence of using a normal phone. For app developers, foldable devices pose new opportunities and challenges for adapting their apps to different sizes, orientations and postures. For content consumers, foldable devices could offer more immersive and engaging experiences with larger and richer displays. For gamers, these devices could enable more dynamic and interactive gameplay with multiple modes and perspectives. But of course, these scenarios are hypothetical and speculative. Apple creating a foldable device could have some benefits for its customers and brand image, but it could also face some challenges and trade-offs in terms of durability, cost and compatibility. Apple making foldable devices could trigger various reactions from its competitors, ranging from aggressive to defensive to innovative by potentially stimulating more growth and diversity in this emerging form factor. Apple has not yet confirmed or denied plans for a foldable device like this. But rumors suggest that it's exploring this possibility. And we do know that Apple is always looking for ways to innovate and surprise its customers. But could it make a foldable iPhone or iPad that not only meets their own high standards of quality, but also delivers that customer satisfaction? Until then, we can only speculate and imagine what a foldable device from Apple would look like and how it would work. But don't be surprised if one day you see one with an Apple logo on a device like this. But what do you think about foldable devices? Would you buy a foldable iPhone? Why or why not? Just let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more tech videos just like this. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.